Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick from NickWilt.com and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you guys another exciting Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In today's video we're going to be showing you how to create the effect that I have on screen right here which is kind of a nice distorted splash effect around a centered around a nice little bottle right here. And before we get started, I just want to say that I took the idea from this tutorial from a blog post seen right in front of you right here. This post basically talks about creating a nice disintegration effect in Photoshop. I guess you could call it disintegration effect. Essentially what I did was I took the tutorial or the techniques shown in this blog post right here and then applied them to my own image of this little sparkling ice bottle right here. And what I ended up getting was something completely different. I was going for the disintegration effect right here but I came out with this nice little splash effect and I thought it was neat and so I figured I'd show you guys how to do it so if you want to check out the original blog post I'll link that in the videos description for you to check it out and before we get started I just also want to say that there's a couple of things that we're gonna need before we actually get started so of course you're going to need an image to use we're going to be using this image right here which I took earlier today but you can use any image that you want to now in order to actually get the effect right here you're also gonna need to download a couple of brush presets. Now, in the tutorial, it says essentially using your favorite particle type brush. I figured in order to get this effect right here, I ended up using a lot of paint splatter brushes, and I have a whole bunch of them right here, which I'll link in the description down below. And these are also the same exact brushes that I used in one of my very first Photoshop tutorials, which I made over seven years ago. So, if you guys want to check out how terrible that video was, I'll link that in the description as well. But essentially, I took the same exact brushes from that video, and we're going to be using them to get the effect that you see right here. So that's enough of me dilly-daddling around. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start out with the basic clean image right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our quick selection tool, and we're going to isolate the bottle from the rest of the background. So I'm just going to click and drag. And it takes a little while because the quick selection tool doesn't like to get some of the little imperfections in the bottle. So we're just going to iron those out. And then I'm going to press the Command and J key on my keyboard to duplicate the layer. And what that will do, once it processes, is that will isolate the bottle from the rest of the background. So this is the bottle that we have, and this is the main thing that we're going to be working with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate that so that we have two different layers, and I'm going to name this one to Bottle, and then I'm going to name the one on the bottom to Effects. So that way we don't get them confused. And then I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to fill the background color in white, just so that we don't get confused with the rest of the background, but we'll be removing this shortly. So the first thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to click on the effects layer right here, and then I'm going to go up to filter, and I'm going to go to liquify. And now, here's where things get crazy. So the first thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to grab my forward warp tool, and we're going to just take the bottle, and we're going to warp and distort it. And it looks like me having all of those processes running in the background is kind of slowing down Photoshop, but we're not going to let that get in the way. I'm basically just going to take and drag out the bottle, and then I'm going to also make it go down a little bit, and I'll probably do the same thing on the other side as well. And we're going for basically a nice stretched out and distorted look. And the more we fill up the rest of the frame, the more room we're going to have to play with once we start adding in the splashes. Okay. So now after I've done that, I'm going to go here to my bloat tool. I'm probably going to increase the brush size just a little bit. I'm going to make sure the brush density is on 100 and the brush rate is down to zero. And well, that's, a, that's way too big. That's way too big. Okay. And now with that, I'm just going to distort away. I'm going to use the bloat tool. And I'm going to make this thing look completely unrecognizable. I'll probably increase this up to just a little bit more. Add in some bloat. And then that looks like it should be fine, so I'm going to click OK on that. And then once it processes, we will be left with a completely unrecognizable mess of bloated ice bottle. And in order to get rid of that, I'm going to go down and I'm going to add in a layer mask. I'm going to 
After that, I'm going to make sure I grab the primary color to be black, and I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool and fill that in, just so that we hide our layer mask. And now we can actually get rid of the white layer. We didn't actually need that too much in the first place. After that, I'm going to go back to the layer that has the bottle on it. I'm going to add in another layer mask and make sure that one's set to white. And now here's the part where we can get crazy. So essentially, we're just going to grab our brush tool over here, make sure you're selected on your layer mask, and then we're going to go up into the brush panel. And we're just going to pick out some paint splatters. And we're going to click in here. Well, actually make sure the foreground color is set to white. That would probably help. We're going to do that. And then we're just going to click around in there with a whole bunch of different paint splatters. And we'll see what we can get. So I'm going to do that. Maybe one of those. Another one of these. Uh, this one looks cool. And we're just going to play around with it until we get something that we like. Then you can also adjust the different sizes, add a whole bunch of different brushes in there. I don't even think that's a paint splatter. We're going to go down here to the bottom. And I don't like that last one. And then really play with it. And then you can take as much time as you want to to mess around with this. I'm just going to be doing it quickly for the sake of this video. I might even add one up at the top. And there we go. And then you can also do the same thing to the bottle. If you select the layer mask on the bottle, switch your foreground color to black, and then click on the bottle, you can kind of make them... kind of make it edge in over here. But I don't actually like that too much. So I'm actually going to grab a regular size brush, if I can find it. And if I just want to erase it, I just simply switch the colors. And then there we go. So after you play around with it and get something that you like using the different brushes, what I like to do is I'm going to just grab a couple of adjustment layers right here. I'll probably adjust the levels in order to make it so that the, that the distortion is a little bit more pronounced and a little bit different from the background. I'll probably... Oops, I'll probably also do that with another curves layer. And I'm going to add a couple of clipping masks just to make sure they affect the layer with the effects on them. Let's do that. And there we have it. So really quick, really simple. The more you play around with this, the better the effect will be. But essentially, that's how you do it. That's how you create a nice little image that looks like this using nothing but paint splatter brushes and Photoshop. So once again, I'd like to say that all of the links to the different paint splatter brushes I used in this video will be linked in the description down below. And I also want to give credit to where credit is due to this article about the disintegration effect inside of Photoshop. So that's essentially it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to check out this picture as well as some of my other photography work, I'd highly recommend you checking out my website at nickwilt.com. Essentially, that's it for this video. If there's anything else you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.